I'll now move on, on to uh, in a random way. In fact, I will now ask uh, Dr. Prabodh Halde. In fact, uh, what role can the food industry play in ensuring safer and healthier food regimes, given the rising obesity and the non-communicable diseases, etc., which are actually swamping us? Will the removal of uh, partially hydrogenated oil help consumers? From my industry perspective, Dr. Halden. Thank you, Mr. Asim. And first, I would like to thank the organizer, which is CIFA and Consumer Voice, for inviting me here. First, would like to say Happy World Food Day 2020. I think on this day, I congratulate the organizer for bringing such a important topic. Before me, the panelist, Dr. Jagmeet, has set the tone. The question which is being asked to me is that how Indian food industry is equipped and what are the plans? Asimji, as you are aware, India consumes around 8% processed food product. That means 92% of the food product which India consumes is in semi-processed or in the loose form. Yes, Indian food industry, which is a standard company, those who are in organized sector, unfortunately, Indian food industry contributes only 25% as an organized sector. Three years back, FSSI has taken an initiative and I think CII was a very important part of that initiative of the pledge saying that we will reduce the burden of sugar, salt and trans fatty acid. More than 50 companies came forward and they have taken a pledge. And all the companies who are actually doing the product, managing the product and selling as a branded product, packaged product, have taken a pledge of reducing, changing the formulations and giving the offering which are much healthier than earlier. So, in fact, we have also worked with CII and they came out with the superb a workshop and the training for the formulators how to change a formulas without getting a taste impact and it was very well accepted by the industry. Organized food industry Asimji is very much concerned and also participating. I will come one by one particularly trans fatty acids. Now on the hydrogenated fat what you have raised if you see the total consumption of the oils and fat in India is closely 2,40,000 metric ton. That is a total oil and fat consumption in India. Because of the COVID and less of import, the last year vis-a-vis -vis this year, we have consumed less of 10 lakhs metric ton. So this year our consumption has reduced by closely 4 to 5 percent, which translates to 10 lakhs metric ton. But if you see, in last 10 years, vegetable fat industry is stagnated to production of 7 to 8 lakhs metric ton. What I am trying to say that Indian consumers are wise. We are moving away from the Vanaspati consumption and to be specific, 2008 to 2020, the Vanaspati production, I am talking about the production level in India because there is no import of the Vanaspati, has reduced. So, the worry of actually trans fat going into the food has stagnated or reduced because the population is increasing. Yes, what Jagmeet Madam Ma'am has said, eating habit of the Indian, Indian people have changed. We are consuming a lot of fried items and doing less exercise and overall consumption has increased. Awareness is important. As far as the products are concerned, Vanaswati production has stagnated, it is a positive part. Second, FSSA has brought a very important regulation putting a limit of trans fatty acid in Vanaspati and by 2021, 2021-22 reducing to 2%. I think it is a great target to go for. The good part in India, Asimji, we eat very less animal origin fats and basically fat products. So, our consumption of the healthy diet is far better than the westernized people. We eat less animal origin fats and also the milk fat compared to the other westernized countries. So, our consumption which goes as a trans fat, number one, it is Avanaspati, 
and some kind of processed food where very high degree of temperature is exposed but most of the refineries which they operate they operate at 220 degree celsius to 30 degree celsius where the formation of trans fat is not in that number it is always below 1.5 percent which is called as a commercially no trans fat so acmg in short to summarize various companies are sensitized indian industry is also understood that health is the wealth and if you do not change people will change you people will not buy your product so organized industry has taken appeal now what we need to do focus a small player medium size player and unorganized industry a halwai wala where they keep trying the things continuously so fssa has brought a very good system of counting the tpc i think as a industry as a corporate responsibility we need to make them also aware because 60% of the consumption of the day indian sweets are coming from the halwai wala we need to focus that sector we need to focus bakery sector but the good part is that whenever this point has been told to this sector they have also consider it positively but the task is humongous asim ji you have traveled with me at many such places and educated and conducted the workshop but yes on this day we can take a pledge corporates and the industry which is coming from organized sector it is very easy the bigger challenge is about a an organized sector and the people who do not understand the impact of this on the health for the taste purpose for making it cheap people do compromise but awareness and proper propagation and knowledge will definitely we will able to target i congratulate fssi for bringing time to time a right kind of regulation to arrest such kind of intervention so with this i stop my opening remark and we will i will get back whenever we ask any specific question thank you asim ji thank you prabodh ji uh, for uh, dropping in uh, two very important points about the draft regulations and uh, about the sme sector uh, uh, probably defaulting on uh, this particular front in terms of adherence to standards uh so this leads me to my uh, next uh, speaker in fact and that is uh, uh, from the regulator fssi dr rubina shaheen i believe uh, rubina you have a presentation uh, will that presentation be uh, done now or can i take up the first question and thereafter uh, we can have the presentation from you so you can have okay so first i'll ask you a basic question uh, uh, which is commonly asked to you and i'm quite sure uh, uh, this is a very important factor for all of us whether in the industry or or in industry as a consumer and that is uh, neither of the two graphs of uh, 3% or 2% i'm using percentage just uh, as a easy de uh, i mean uh, denomination of a foreign understanding of all participants in fact i have not been notified yet so therefore does fsi have the capacity to implement both uh, the uh, within the timeline and to also ensure that uh, and food regulations are brought into uh, the sphere soon to complete the food cycle which i mean is 2% uh, 3% and 2% 21 uh, 22 and then you have uh, basically a, a timeline for uh, bringing in and food also in the chapter uh, Do you think FSSI uh, is within the timeline? Uh, yes, sir. We are. That since the regulation is already draft notified and it's in the final stages, that with the uh, Minister of Commerce, I think I. Your voice is uh, your voice is uh, breaking a little. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is it fine? Slightly better. Slightly better. Yes. Since our regulation is already in the final stages of notification and being vetted by ministry, so it will be out by uh, within a month. And uh, so, uh, uh, so regulations which are regarding the limits of uh, trans fat in process would take some time. So, uh, what we are doing, uh, we have already uh, taken up uh, the uh, from the uh, so that we can like India at seventy five where we are. Going to phase out trans fats from our food in uh, a three percent by January 2021 and two percent by 2022, which is a year ahead of what the WHO has recommended. So uh, we and we have also taken care of like uh, from the different supply side. Then supply side, most of the excess which were 
or uh, have already taken a pledge that they will be uh, uh, transferred, their food production will be transferred uh, from, from the existing five percent will be coming to two percent. So from large supply side, we have uh, like Indian Vanaspati Producers Association and Solvent Extract Association and Vanaspati Manufacturer Association of India who have already taken a voluntary pledge. So uh, they this will also help us in achieving our target earlier, like by 2020. So, uh, most of our stakeholders will be the family checks. Where if they, their, their production will have to, will uh, abide by the limit, similarly, it will go down, uh, percolate down to the unorganized sector as well. Thank you, Dr. Rubina, for uh, <coughs> the precise answer to this particular thing. So, we have some more time to wait for. Uh, to see the regulations uh, come into the uh, frame. 